And welcome to this special from the top segment on TI Now, right here from OPNFE. We happen to have the president of the open platform for NFE uh, in our studio here. Her name is Margaret Kiyosi. And Margaret, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, I want to start by asking you really what the primary goal of the open platform for NFE is. The main goal was really to get the industry to work together on creating a common uh, open platform for NFE. So to create a common framework. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be open source, even though we started initially in open source. Um, it's really to come up with a common framework and we have all these different components. And the goal is, as the components, if they're proprietary, let them evolve in their own space to open source, if ever. Um, but as they evolve, as that function evolves, we don't want to keep rearra rearranging the framework. Because then you're sort of starting from scratch over and over again. And as an industry, that will slow us down. So we're, we're, we're hoping that OPNFE, it's like the only place where we can, as an industry, gather together from a software point of view of trying to do this integration of all these components, whether they're open source, whether they're proprietary, um, and to pull it together with some common framework and try to get it to work. Now, lo not long ago, Margaret, you said, um, and I'm quoting here, the telecom industry needs to be wary of different versions of open source platforms taking hold in the industry as it moves to the new IP. Can you explain what you meant by that? So, so, so let's go back. So if you look, we do not have a common open framework for all of the NFE platform. We have pieces of it. And in the meantime, you've got all the carriers who are committed to um, creating this SDN-enabled cloud, I call it, for AT&T Domain 2.0 um, now. I mean, at and is doing it now. And since we don't have open, we don't have a common framework, we're basically developing our own. We've come up with our own framework. Um, and we know it's ours. We know it's proprietary and so forth. So now you've got all these other companies also having very aggressive schedules. So now, because we don't have anything common, everyone's creating their own version, their own proprietary version. Vendors are, carriers are, and so forth. So as we move forward, you now have factions of the industry starting to create, proposing their version of what should be open. And so that's why I said the, the more of these we have, then there's this whole position of trying to get people to go into their camp and it splinters the industry, it splinters the work effort, it thins it out, that my concern is we won't get much traction anywhere. And so if we can at least come together and work together as an industry on the one, I do believe we'll go faster. Margaret, you said uh, again in a previous uh, keynote, I think, or an interview, you mentioned that uh, events like this gives you a much clearer picture of who in the industry is actually moving forward on NFE and who's just really talking about moving forward in the NFE. H how is that? So there's a whole debate on the care space. Do we, to participate in open source, since we might be new at it, should we work through a vendor? And the vendors, of course, pitch that we should work through them. But after h and we've done both. We've worked through vendors and we're also participating ourselves. And one thing that's become pretty obvious to me is that if you really want to understand who the movers and shakers are, the personalities, the biases that happen in the open source, it's very hard to get that feeling um, by going through a, a third party or a vendor. Um, naturally, it's nothing malicious. Naturally, the vendors hear your needs and they interpret. The question is, do you know if they interpret it accurately? And then they go out to the industry and represent you, and then they come back and tell you what happened. But still, there's an interpretation of, from their point of what happened, and then they tell you. There's no way they know exactly what you meant or exactly what you're looking for. And by actually participating in events like OPNFE, OpenStack, Open Daylight, and so forth, you actually start seeing who really is doing what versus a slide where they might put out saying, we're participating in this, we submit so much code. You really see who's driving what. You see who's leading. And it actually gives you insight. You see the personalities and you see the biases that happen, which also helps you realize, wait a minute, maybe what I'm being told, it's very biased, and you don't appreciate that until you see it in action. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example of this whole ODP, DBDK um, um, challenge. Um, you have two different uh, data plane development kits. 
One is in the SOC arena, the ARM SOC system on chip arena, so it's ODP, and the other is in the um, the PCIe bus, you know, um, um, DBDK. And I personally think the two organizations need to to merge more and 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 have work on really one common. Um, API and as without a participating each side would tell me what was going on as they try to uh, work together and I actually ended up forcing a meeting a few months ago where I saw everything in action and then I realized some of the things people were saying to me were was jaded or filtered or biased because from their viewpoint this is what they saw yet when I saw it I saw very different um, directions, very different motivations than what they were telling me. And so if anything, it made me get even stronger opinion that to really shape the, the open source arena, to really influence the way you want it as an end user, you have to really directly participate so you can see it in action. And when you're further removed, it gets filtered. And I mean, I can't say anything more than that. It gets filtered. And it's very important to see it for real and make your own judgment versus the filtered mode. I mean, I, I've been a manager where I've had um, um, directors report to me, and you had the folks who were actually doing the real work. And I would always do these skip levels because my directors, not maliciously, but just filter things because they would interpret whatever was going on, and they would tell me whatever from their point of what they thought I th thought would be important. And I would touch bases at the skip levels, and I would get a better feel for what was really going on to realize, wait a minute, certain things I don't agree with. Versus my management didn't realize that, right? So the, my managers are filtering to me, so I don't see it, so I get this version. And then when I find out what's going on, then I say, wait a minute, we need a direct. Or other times I say, okay, we're fine. So it's the same thing. You need to touch base directly so you can actually understand truly what's going on so then you can influence and go appropriately. I think it's an interesting um, perspective that you just explained to us because somebody, and I think it was even Sandra Rivera talked about there's clearly a technology shift in um, legacy infrastructure, legacy equipment, and now to virtualize net networks, SDN, NFE. But almost just as important is the cultural shift as we make that transition from the manual way of doing things and now to um, virtualize networks again. Why would a company at this point in the game not want to be part of, let's say, OPNFE? What would be their reason? I would say part of it is resources. A lot of carriers have told me, even European carriers have told me they really would love to participate. They believe in the mission, but there's, they have staffing issues. I mean, good or bad, at and coming out in the forefront with Domain 2.0. I mean, John Donovan did an excellent job between recognizing the, the major transition that this technology um, can help us in to you know, get to you know, agility of new services, to him convincing our CEO this is the way to go, and then our CEO embracing it and forcing the company, I guess, to rally around it, and having our domain 2.0 metrics so we can meet certain things, got the intention of all the carriers, to the point now they're all scrambling to try to basically execute quickly too. Versus before, it was in a lab. So we really helped the industry basically go from lab to reality. And so people are scrambling. And so since all the carriers are scrambling, and it's new, it's, I mean, it's, you really have to change the way you operate, the way your corporation converges, the concept of the DevOps. Um, it's easy to say, but to truly do it, it's, unless you go through it, it's hard to explain what it really means. And so since they're so busy trying to transition their companies in this new area, you know, trying to implement quickly and scurry and so forth, now the next thing is, do you have enough resources to participate in the open source community? And when you look at the priorities, it ends up being, I'd love to, but if I can't you know, meet my business needs now, I mean, mm. does it, I mean, does it matter, doesn't matter, right? But I would also say that to truly understand what you need, to truly take control, or to take back control of how to drive what's necessary for your business to succeed, you can't afford to not be participating. Because when you participate, you see things so directly that it gives you stronger opinions of what you should demand from your vendors. Versus now, if you don't, and you just go through your vendors, you're really getting the opinions of the vendors and shaping your opinions based on them versus yours directly. And again, you got that filtering problem. 
How do they really know what you mean? How do they know what's really important? And so in that sense, how do you then, how, and so there's sort of, you know, this replay of information back and forth, but since it's filtered, it's too much superficial. And when you get to really participating in these open standards, you see it for real, and then you realize quickly, where is it at? To realize, wait a minute, X, Y, Z, might be very nascent, even though the vendors say it's in good shape. And you see the lines of code, the commitments, the numbers, right? And then if you realize, let's say it's nascent, you realize, wait a minute, that means I have to do it more myself, or I have to whatever, you know, what the vendor, or realize it's going to be more proprietary than open. Um, and then you might also see, wow, this is in really good shape. And so then maybe, fine, I outsource it to a vendor, but at least I'm comfortable that if it's in good shape, at least I won't be, you know, tied to a specific vendor version. It really is an open source version. So um, that, that's the key thing I'm learning. But that's why my argument with everyone is like, I don't know if you can afford not to, but it's still a judgment call on how you weave through this. I think one of the top, or I'm hearing that one of the top priorities um, as, we, as we virtualize our networks, as we talk about NFV, is security. And security by design is one of those like, subtopics, if you will. Uh, what's the importance of embedding and implementing security far sooner than when the device gets to the edge. Oh, no, it's, I mean, when you look at how we've, um, you know, changed everything, it's very important. I mean, one thing good, when we created the NFV NFE forum, um, we came up with, I forgot, three or four working groups that were going to be experts on day one as we try to figure out what, uh, what you know, the, the NFE platform functionally diagram was. And one of them was security. We pulled in the experts in the industry, because we're carriers and we knew everybody, the key experts in the industry from a vendor community as well as um, carriers to work on security. To the point that we actually had some of the governments who were into security show up to the NCISG meetings on security. And so the OPNFE is actually taking a lot of that good work and trying to apply it to, um, to OPNFE. So we are, our goal is to try to interweave and instantiate it sooner than later. We have, we're, we're, we're starting, um, and what we get out, hopefully we get something that will have it more intertwined versus an afterthought. Margaret, I know we have to get you back to your event, OPNFE, and by the way, congratulations on the success of that. We've heard a lot of good things, um, and more so, thanks for your time. Okay, thank you. Thanks.